Hello, this is Ray Marquis, Senior Application Engineer with Valen Corporation. And this short video is going to show how to use Intelligent Actuator's speed control holding incremental load motion mode on the IAI ServoPress product. I want to talk about the different ServoPress press motion modes. There's a table right out of the manual that I'm showing here, and you can see there are nine modes. There are four speed control and five force control. And then inside each speed control, there's position, stop, distance, stop, load, stop, and incremental stop. It's important to look at this part first because when we go back to the software and we look at these modes, they have a slightly different name. Speed control, keeping position, uh, keeping distance, keeping load, holding incremental load. So basically when you see keeping or holding, in the software, that means stopping at, just like it shows in the manual here. The other thing I wanna point out is that in the speed control, there's this position stop, distance stop, load stop, and incremental stop. And there are those same four modes in the force control. We'll forget about mode number nine for now, but I'm probably only gonna do the videos for the first four modes in speed control because the only difference is that in speed control, the speed is held consistent while it finds its position or it finds its distance in this case, or it finds the load, or it finds the incremental load. Uh, in force control, the speed is not held consistent, so it will slow down or speed up based on the resistance of the load that you're pushing against, but it'll still stop at the position. So if I do a speed control position stop or a force control position stop, both of those modes are gonna have the actuator move to target position before it stops. So these modes are kind of duplicated. Of course, in previous videos, we've looked at some of the other modes of operation. This one is the speed control holding incremental load. So this is controlling the speed and then stopping at an incremental load, which means that we're going to find the part in this search region by touching against it and using the amount of force that we set in the work search motion, in this case, five Newton meters. So we're going to press down on this part until we see five Newton meters feedback. And then we're going to go into the press motion or transition into the press motion part of the program and we're gonna add 40 Newtons to that. So we're gonna press down with five, transition to the press motion, and then add 40, so we'll end up at 45 Newton meters. Where we end up as a position is not specified, but we can't exceed this 88 millimeters. So if we keep pressing and pressing and pressing and we never see our 45 Newtons, by the time we hit 88 millimeters, then we're gonna stop with an error. An alarm output will come on on the controller. Here we are back in the RoboCylinder programming software, and this is the program that I've created for the speed control holding incremental load. You can see that I've set the work search, search motion to a slow speed and a fairly low terminating load of five Newton meters. Once we reach that five Newton meters of force feedback, we're gonna to transition to the press motion and add an additional 40 Newton meters of load to the motion so that we'll end up at 45 Newton meters doesn't matter where the actuator ends as long as it doesn't go past 88 millimeters, which is the limiting position here. Let's run it and see how it looks using the press program operation monitor, which is found over here in the tree view on the left. If you've watched past videos, you'll see how to get to that. So the load's at 19, 36, 45, almost 45, 44.92, and so we're at 64 millimeters. You can go back and watch that again, but we made 64 millimeters before we reached our 45 uh, Newtons of force. Here's a video to show that motion and you'll see where the actuator stops. Next, we're gonna change the terminating load for the work search motion to 10 Newton meters. We could also increase the end incremental load if we figured out after running this program a few times that we weren't pressing enough to get the parts together or to put the cap on or do whatever the press actual uh, process is. We could increase this or we can increase this here so that we push a little harder before we actually start adding our press motion. So I'll save this change to the controller. Let's go back here and run it again.
So our current load is 50 now, and we reached 66 millimeters, whereas before we were a little shorter than that. So it moved a tiny bit farther before it reached the current load. And here's a video of that for you to watch. You might have to scroll back to see the other video, but if you watch this one, we're gonna stop after we find the part and we start pressing, we're gonna stop a little after or right at 65. The other one was just above 65 millimeters. That's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you have questions, you can contact us using the information on the screen. If you call in, you can ask for automation, application engineering support, and either I or one of my colleagues will be available to assist you.